I, I, I say it all the time. I'm going, I'm going to say it again. Your next is better than you. You've got to trust Finally. in what's to come. Yes. And, and Elisha could have stood there and troubled over the oxen and over the plows oh, sure. and over the employees and over most the family would. business. But most would. He knew. Yes, yep. mo and most do. But yep. he knew that that what was next, that moment, you talked one day to me about a tipping point and how when the tipping point happens yep. and you put the hammer down and, and we were talking about the call of God and, yep. and what's what you're going to do and visions and, and plans. And yep. you said there's a tipping point. But you told me, you said when the when we hit the tipping point, it's the it's hammered down. We're going. Absolutely. This thing is of Absolutely. God and we're not looking back now. That's what mm. Elisha did in that moment. And no. the miraculous, my God, we need the miraculous in the church. And my I believe Lord we're Jesus. coming into a day where we are going to see the miraculous like we never have. And no. and if for Elisha to have the double anointing and begin to see the miracles, you know, I started digging through them last night. Miracle after miracle. The one starts right when he picks the cloak up and he strikes and says, where now is the Lord God of Elijah? You know, I've been following this. I've been seeing this. But, you know, just because the prophet's gone does not mean the power of God is gone. No, sir. So where is he now? And and the water splits. You know, the water parts for him to walk yep. across. And, I, and, and as I started going through his miracles last night, we can just talk about a few of them. As sure. I started going through the miracles that happened at the hand of Elisha, just right from the start, as I looked at the river being divided there, um, I just felt the spirit of God saying that something is when you step into that next, when you trust God for that next anointing, that something's going to open up that was not that. open before. And we're oh, sitting yeah. on this side and, we, and we're struggling because we need it open. We want it open. It, it, it's got to be open for us. And it does not open until we say, OK, I'm in a new level of anointing. But he had to pick the cloak up and do something with it. Absolutely. He couldn't I've stand seen. on the side and just wait on the water to part. No. He uh, had to take an activity. And he beat the water. What I, what I say in that, what, when I think of that, is he employed the anointing. Yes. There's nothing, yes. There's nothing most, more wasteful hmm. than an, an anointing oh, come on. that isn't used. It is the greatest waste in the world. And Elisha, come when on. he got the mantle... He put it to the test immediately. He said, okay, then, if God's God, here I go. And he hit the water, yes. and he had the same miracle that Moses had. The water parted. Yes. And all the yes. other guys that were standing there watching and witnesses, the, the, the rising up in the chariot and all that crazy stuff, still didn't have yes. the anointing. Yes. It's the people yep. that decide, I want to take what I have, it might be meager, it might be pathetic in the circumstance I'm in, but I am going to use what God has given me. And if I use what God has yeah. given me, I then plug into the flow of God, and then He starts the flow. It won't happen for you. Listen to me, friend, watching today. The anointing won't flow until you allow it to flow, until you do something that challenges you out of the norm into the extraordinary yes. or into the divine. Sure. And when that happens and you employ the anointing, then everything, yes. everything changes. We look at Vatra Village today, Derek, and it's the most amazing place. I mean, it's, it's mine. I can't believe that the Lord allowed us to yeah. do this. That was started in the worst days of my life. It yeah, was beyond it was beyond anything that I could ever imagine. My son Andrew and I were up in Ukraine opening up a house. Chris and I had met I, I talked to a, a, a immigration official in Atlanta and he asked us where we'd come from. I says, Moldova. He said, Are you kidding me? I said, yeah, we do mission work there. He says, man, I've just, I've, I've just transferred off from the Caribbean and we intercepted a container with 38 Moldovan girls shipped from Odessa in the Ukraine. Mm. And I looked at him mm. and I mean, it was like the Lord saying, hello. And we opened, we opened yeah. this house and I'm sitting there risking everything to open one house. <laughs> and this guy drives four hours through a blizzard to meet with me. And he says, oh, we want you to buy this village. And another organization had bought it and had, had, it had been unable to pay it. And I says, let me pray about it. 
yes, I'm going to do it. it. You talk about yeah. beating the river hit with a, at a mantle and thinking, my goodness, will this ever work again? But if That's I it. hadn't done yeah. it, the flow and the blessing and those lives you've just watched enjoying yeah. Christmas for the first time in their life, all of they were li living under the water, drowning in their circumstances. Yeah. And all it takes yeah. is a man or a woman <laughs> that will beat the water and say, I'm going to employ the anointing. And all of this victory in life comes out of it. It's amazing. 